please give a very warm WI Tech Rev welcome to Anna Flack. Thank you, Susan. Thank you to Susan and Natalie for putting together this amazing event. Um, and um, thanks for everyone uh, for coming. So when um, Susan and Natalie asked me to speak um, a couple of weeks ago, um, I was thinking, well, they, they told me to speak about myself, my own journey. So I thought, well, that, that should be easy. At least I won't forget the script. <laughs> um, but um, it, it's, an, it's a massive honor to be speaking um, at the same event as, as Helen Christiana. I actually saw Helen at Blockchain Live a couple of weeks ago and thought, she's amazing, I want to meet her. So I've met her now. <laughs> um, so then I kind of, well, had a think and, and decided to talk about how amazing it is to not only work in fintechs, but also in, in finance at the moment and what an amazing time it is for it. Um, because we are standing at the brink of a technological um, revolution that will completely alter the way that we communicate, the way we work and the, the way we live. And um, B2B um, institutions, B2B capital markets institutions, so business to business, um, not retail banking, but institutional banking, they have to be leading it because the whole system is archaic. Um, it's not like Monzo, it's not like Revolut, how we know it. Um, so they should be leaving it, and whether you're an asset manager, whether you are um, a hedge fund or a custodian, you, you, you can't ignore um, crypto or blockchain. And they're not, luckily. Um, so I'll talk about my personal journey, how I got into blockchain and fintech, um, what blockchain will do for capital markets, how to take the leap, um, so some, some tips how to get into the industry, um, and then touch upon the topic women in fintech, because I think that's really important, um, and where to get your daily um, news fix for crypto. Um, and then last but not least, look at um, kind of the déjà vu, uh, look at the internet um, in 1995 and how many people thought it would never actually uh, be an important thing and now we wouldn't be able to live without it. So that's me. Um, as uh, Susan said, I'm Head of Marketing, Communications and Business Development at Equichain. Um, I know it's a huge title. Uh, you wear many hats um, if you work for FinTech, um, so that's why. Um, and I also advise uh, FinTechs on how to build their brand and, and, and set up a comms and, and, and communication strategy. Going back to um, square one, so I wanted to do the joke um, that you did, Christiana, but I think it wouldn't have been that authentic. <laughs> so a nice, nice British audience, um, but I'm from Germany, I'm actually from Munich uh, in Germany. So when I looked it up this morning, I saw that Munich is known uh, for being a tech hub, uh, which is great for startups and so forth, um, and lots of accelerators, and, and there is Oktoberfest, which just finished last Sunday. <laughs> My voice is fine. <laughs> but actually, I thought it was more known for pretzels and beer and the Oktoberfest and, and the Alps and so forth. Um, anyway, joking aside, I could have um, had a great tech career in Munich, but I decided to leave Munich when I was 18 um, to study in the UK. Um, and uh, then I decided to go to France to do my master's there. And then I decided to come back to London because it's amazing. And I think that was a good step because um, London is the financial centre of the world um, and it's become very, very important and leading in fintech uh, and crypto as well. I know looking at Europe, there's Switzerland, um, which, is, which is leading, they're doing a lot, lots of stuff. There's Estonia, um, they've got a lot of the voting, is e-voting, a lot of the stuff they're doing is digital already, so they're quite advanced. Um, but yeah, London is a, is a great hub to be, and um, yeah, not mentioning the B word, I'll stay. Um, so yeah, then I worked for um, a company called Allianz, an insurance company, uh, worked for Ketchum, which is a PR um, agency, um, but then realized that I prefer to kind of work for, I, I really enjoyed working in finance, looking at complex topics and, and, and communicating them. Um, in, in, in a simple fashion. I really enjoyed that and I decided that doing communications for companies such as McDonald's or Barbie isn't for me. So I had a stint at Oxfam, which I loved in Oxford, the headquarters, um, but decided for myself that I wanted to work in a company with a bit of a harder culture, just to see what it's like and I'd be, if I'd be able to cope. So I chose a French bank, uh, not an American one, so it's kind of in between. Uh, so I worked for BNB Paribas in Paris and then in London. Um, and then I joined Comets Bank, which is the second uh, largest bank in Germany. 
based in London. Um, and that was the pivotal moment for me when, um, when I heard about blockchain for the first time, which was in 2015. Um, I think it must have been around the time where we had a new strategy announced. Um, we were all of a sudden, we weren't a, a bank anymore, we were a tech company. Uh, and so I kind of jumped into all sorts of projects um, looking at blockchain. And um, the head of fixed income and currencies that I reported to or worked with closely, he was hugely supportive of all. So we, you know, we did lots of interesting projects with, with publications such as Bloomberg, um, thought-provoking content um, and thought leadership campaigns and so forth on blockchain. So that's when I kind of worked um, um, over, well, in, in a blockchain-related uh, subject for the first time and loved it. Um, so then at one point I um, felt like it was a, a good moment to learn something new and move on. Um, I kind of hit a wall, um, or should I say glass ceiling, um, and uh, I wrote down all of the things that I potentially would like to move into, big data, fintech, blockchain, it was all one of them. And then the next day I had a message on LinkedIn from a, a former uh, colleague at BNB Paribas, a dear colleague that told me, Anna, I went to this conference and this guy just set up his own fintech and he needs a head of marketing. And I said, um, well, Anna Flack is your woman. So I joined Equijain, um, which you can see here. So Equijain is a capital markets uh, focused blockchain fintech. Um, and at first, when I started, or before I started, um, it was a little bit scary, a little bit daunting, because I had never done it before. Um, I'd never done any blockchain marketing. Also, one of my um, mentors at BNB Paribas, very clever man, you know, told me once, you know, Anna, I think in marketing, there's either people that like to, um, or generally there's people that like to improve processes, or people that like to build things from scratch. And I always kind of saw myself as someone um, with quite a lot of attention to detail. So I'd be like, oh, shit, can I actually create things from scratch? Would I be creative enough? Um, and so, yeah, and also at Commerzbank, I had a huge budget. Uh, I had um, Bloomberg and other publications call me on a daily basis. And um, I had a huge um, support machine, whether it be my graphics team in Frankfurt in London, whether it be my colleagues, um, the central marketing team, um, legal compliance. I didn't have any of those in, in a startup, so it was a little bit daunting. Then I joined and um, I loved it. <laughs> so the second I started, uh, it wasn't daunting at all anymore. Um, and it, it wasn't, you know, it, it was just amazing. I, um, I also loved the fact that actually no one had done blockchain marketing before. So it was completely new. There wasn't a uh, best practice, so there wasn't a one, day, one way of doing things. So, so that was fine. I love the fact that we wouldn't be having meetings for meetings sake. I love the fact that I didn't have to internal stakeholder management. Um, every email that I wrote was for the growth of the business or our clients. Um, I loved all of that. I loved how we made decisions very quickly and so forth. Um, and <clears throat> And so, um, yeah, it all went on well. It went very well. And um, very soon I had more and more responsibilities, which weren't marketing related. Very easy in a startup. If you're interested and clever, every brain's needed. Um, so I moved more into kind of the sales, the business development side, investor pitches. After, I think, I think six weeks in the job, um, I presented at a CFA event. So that's chartered um, financial analysts. Um, and a few weeks later, I pitched at an event because no one else was free or, you know, in the evening. So it's these kinds of things where you can, you can grow in and move really, really quickly, quicker than in a bigger organization. Um, and yeah, so here are some of the things I did at Equichain. Um, we completely recreated the brand and that doesn't just mean the logo, but did everything from scratch, went back to square one. Who are we? What do we stand for? Um, who are our clients, how are we different to our competitors, and so forth. Uh, and, and all of this at no cost and hardly any time. So um, it would have taken years in a big bank. So that was exciting. Relationships with journalists, events, our external profile um, got a lot better. And, and, and you know, messaging was more streamlined. We all started going out saying the same things, whether you're kind of the lead engineer or whether you're uh, the CEO. So that's that. So I wanted to tell you a little bit about uh, what blockchain can do for capital markets. Um, I'm going, just going to keep it very high level. I know everyone's kind of from really different sectors and so forth. 
Um, but just to give you an idea, so EquiChain was founded in 2015. Um, there's four of us in London, a few of us in Hong Kong. Um, we work a lot in Abu Dhabi in the Middle East um, because we have existing relationships there and we believe things actually move a lot faster over there. So the kind of further you go east, it seems, everything seems to move a little bit faster with regards to blockchain and, and, and fintech or crypto. Um, and so, um, thank you. So capital markets, um, it's, as I said, they don't quite work as we know it from Mondo, Monzo or Revolut. So they are quite archaic when it comes to systems, not everywhere, but especially when you look at post-trade, there's a lot of space for efficiencies. So trades um, in institutional B2B banking um, happen in nanoseconds and then it can take up to three days or more for the trade to clear and settle. Um, so there's many, many different players involved to, to do all the admin work behind it, really, to um, do the exchange between ownership versus, versus assets, to kind of track where the security is at the point of time. There's custodians that safeguard the assets and so forth. So a lot of that can be done on the blockchain um, via smart contracts. So for instance, um, corporate actions or paying dividends and that kind of stuff, which would now be done by an institution quite in an old fashioned paper stamp way, could all be done by blockchain. So there's a lot of room for, for innovation. And, um, and so yeah, we believe that with blockchain we could connect investors directly again, just like it would happen in an ICO. So who's heard of an ICO before? Okay, so quite a few of you. So that's, a, that's an initial coin offering. So it's, it's a fairly new method of fundraising. It's similar to an IPO, if you're familiar with that. If a company wants to go list, go public, do an initial public offering. But an ICO, it's very, well, it's only existed a few, few years. A lot of money has been raised and people invest in tokens and they can be different kinds of tokens, security tokens, um, utility tokens and so forth. Um, so, our idea is to kind of say, well, this is great because you don't have all of these players and these layers in between that you don't necessarily need, but it, there's not a lot of investor protection. So we want to take that to a regulated context. And that's not just us, by the way, so I'm, I'm not doing the marketing pitch here. That's a general trend in the industry. There are a lot of players out there. They're looking at that. Um, so, yeah. This again, I just wanted to show because if you work in crypto or if you work in banking, it's quite interesting, this whole discussion about institutions and crypto. Because when I joined Equichain end of last year, we said blockchain isn't crypto. Um, because banks didn't want to do, have, have to do anything with the Bitcoin thing. And that has changed dramatically. The rhetoric around that has changed so much. Um, institutionals are waiting to get into the space, it's my personal opinion. And um, many of them, personal opinion from the conversations that we've had with many players, with many companies that come to us um, on, a, on a kind of weekly, monthly basis, um, and they are just waiting for the regulation to come in and the infrastructure to be put in place. So, for instance, the custodians that I spoke about earlier um, that are now look, safeguarding assets such as equities and, and, and so forth with digital assets, um, that there's no need for that. It, the, the assets will be on the blockchain. However, there is a need for someone, for an institution to look after your private key, for instance. So many custodians are looking at that, Coinbase are looking at that, um, and I, I think something will happen very quickly. But yeah, we're very, very proud, very honored to, to have so many international, um, global asset managers that we work with and, and infrastructure providers and so forth. Thank you. Um, other applications um, which I personally find exciting is nothing really to do with, with my role except the first one, which is digital assets, which, um, as I just mentioned, many companies are looking at. So we're in the sandbox. This is another thing which is, which is really great in London. The FCA is really um, collabor collaborative with fintechs. So a lot has changed since, um, since 2008, really. So you know, there are these, these regulatory sandbox where fintechs work with the regulator together to test an innovation. Um, and, and yeah, that works quite well. And we're in Abu Dhabi global market to, to create an exchange with only digital assets. But a digital asset could be, could be anything. There's, there's such a thing as tokenization, so representing 
um, assets, it could be a marriage certificate, it could be a security representing them um, on, on the blockchain. So some people say anything could be tokenized now, also very illiquid assets such as real estate um, or energy and so forth. Or digital assets could be born on the blockchain, so such as in the initial coin offering that I mentioned earlier, um, that there be native digital assets, which is the ultimate goal in our opinion. Then identity ownership, I'm really excited about that. I'm German, um, we, we love you know, owning your own data. <laughs> so um, with all the breaches, with Facebook and so forth, um, I'd love to own my own data and get money for, um, for, for you know, not having other central, authority, central parties making money with, um, with my data through advertising and so forth. Um, but it could also be um, really useful in things such as, you know, with the refugee crisis and, and things like that. So there's so many things that blockchain can do, which I'm really excited about. Voting rights, I, I mentioned earlier briefly, Estonia, um, they're already quite digital. Financial inclusion, there are um, over two billion people in the world, adults, that do not have access to financial services, so they're called the, the unbanked, essentially. And in, in many of the emerging markets, um, they're moving quite fast and, and, and you know, there's, there's blockchain payments and so forth which could, which could make these things pos possible. Land ownership after um, natural disasters, who actually owns this piece of land, that kind of stuff. And then obviously uh, supply chain, which is exciting as well. And we were speaking about it earlier. IBM um, have a, um, a blockchain supply chain which is just in testing with Carrefour in France. Um, so where you can actually track down the food that you're buying be amazing as well. Right, so now taking the leap into crypto. Um, I think it's a no-brainer. I absolutely love it. Um, also just saying that jobs in blockchain and technology can take any form or face. You don't need to have done your GCSEs at nine years old or six years old. <laughs> um, you can, you know, there's so many roles out there and your skills are transferable, so, and there's so many people need it. Um, so talk to those guys at Harrington Star and so forth. Um, there's really a lot out there. And um, fintech is sexy. I mean, I feel like I haven't burned any bridges. I feel like, I mean, I talk to my colleagues a lot. They, they are interested in blockchain. They are interested in how we work in fintechs. So in the WeWork that we used to be based, we had um, City had the innovation hub there. Standard charts that were there, you know. So I feel like it's kind of they, they even do exchange of mentors between fintech and banks and so forth. So it's not a bad step. It's a, it's a good step to make, and it's it's reversible, you know. <clears throat> um, one thing which I find really interesting as well, being a millennial, um, that <laughs> you might have heard the stats. By 2030, millennials will make up 75% of the workforce. I'm really looking forward to it. Um, <laughs> Um, it will be a dramatic shift, I think. Just the way we work, equality as well, um, I find, is, is, is different. And it's just more, it's just more relaxed and it, it's obviously more agile and, and fast and everything. And same with freelancing. Uh, it's, it's all changing dramatically and, and getting into blockchain is great because this is just the beginning of the technology. It's still a very um, young technology. This, you know, it, it, and it'd be, it's exciting to be part of it early. Right, I don't know if you saw this, or if you've heard of that, but as Susan mentioned, Satoshi, the white paper about uh, Bitcoin was published in 2008. There's an anniversary coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, a big party as well. Um, and first fact about women in blockchain, Satoshi is female. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay, I didn't hear any no's. Um, and then the interesting thing is just, I mean, it's, it's technology and it's risky because it's, you know, it's, it's new and it's startups and so forth. And I think many of us know that women tend to pursue fewer careers in technology and um, tend to be more risk averse. So actually, it's quite shocking. The number of women in fintech um, is, is not enough yet. And um, it's actually the stats are worse than, worse than banks at the moment because of, for, for, of that reason. And if you look at it, it's 5% of the crypto enthusiasts are women. And crypto enthusiasts was defined as, it could be anyone from an investor, developer, um, or someone that's remotely interested in crypto. So we need to obviously lift that. 17% uh, of fintech founders are women. Uh, from an investment perspective, there is 
said to be an unconscious bias against female founders. That's kind of there's biases in recruitment when when people like to hire people that are like them, right? Or any any kind of unconscious biases. Um, but there's lots of lots of stuff happening um, at the moment to to kind of um, resolve that. And then there's an increase in skills and talent gap. I should have added digital, especially. Um, there's so many fintechs. I always hear this from Innovate Finance, which is the official. Uh, body of fintechs in London, um, that companies need people with digital skills, right? And um, I think it's 15% of graduates um, with computer science degrees are women. So we need to we need to inspire these young women to, to get into the field because, well, even from a business perspective, there's a business case for it. So yeah, do it. Um, London's your oyster. I think this is the best example. I don't even know how to get out of these events anymore. I'm literally, every week I'm doing so many things because there's so much happening in the city. And there's so many events and many of them don't even cost anything. You get free drinks and food. So literally there's so much out there. I'd really encourage you to do it, but I'm preaching to the converters. Um, again, it's okay that you don't know what you don't know. So these were the doubts that I had when I started at Equichain. Um, it's a steep learning curve. It's absolutely normal that you don't know everything at the beginning, like in any job. Um, it can be a bit daunting, it can be a bit um, um, like a not very accessible industry, maybe. Um, make it a positive experience. This, I had this because I signed up to Google Campus as well, which, which I love. There's so many events going on there, just around the corner from here. And there was a sales workshop, workshop by a guy called Bill Liao, um, who's a serial entrepreneur and has done many amazing things. And he just was standing up here and he said, you know, I'm, I'm still nervous. I've got butterflies, but I decided to make this a good experience. So I love that. So if you're not sure, just, just make it a good experience. Just make it positive. And just do it. So, so many things have happened for me by just having done it. And um, by just having, you know, walked up to someone after an event by, I saw a press release. I, I phoned up um, a CMO. Now we're probably starting something together, um, a, a project together. Um, Natalie and, and Susan, I met them at this event and I'm speaking here. <laughs> uh, it's just, you don't really, you can't really lose anything. Um, put yourself forward, reach out to people, take a risk. I feel like especially at our age, what have we got to lose? Here, your daily crypto fix. I mean, the first one is the, is the Bitcoin white paper that we spoke about. It's only eight pages. It's worth a read. Um, very famous book by um, John Tapscott and Alex Tapscott, The Blockchain Revolution, which is really inspiring. But blockchain and crypto, it moves so quickly. Every morning the first thing I do is look at the news and I could spend the whole day on it. I really need to stop myself. Um, but I think the best ones for kind of news bites is Coindesk. Um, they've got their weekly and daily analysis of everything that's happening. Uh, Forbes is really amazing as well. I know some of the people at both those places and um, it's always good to have kind of a balanced view, obviously. Um, Blockchain Insider. Who knows Blockchain Insider? It's a, it's a podcast. I walk to work, 20 minutes, and, and it's just the best because they, they're really clever guys and they invite externals from all sorts of companies in on, um, is it weekly? On a weekly basis. Um, and they discuss everything that's happening out there in the news because often you read it and you don't quite understand it and they give you all the detail and you don't have to read it, you can do it on the go, which is amazing. And I added Google Alerts because I do that for myself. I actually have alerts for my own name in case you write about me after this, I'll see it. Um, or for anything that you're interested in, particularly in, in blockchain or crypto, you get your alerts. It's just it's quite handy actually. Um, and this is, was a video I wanted to show you in case you haven't seen it. Um, it's, it's just it's hilarious because it's, um, it's the Today Show in 1994 and they talk about this internet thing and oh my god, I wouldn't want to be on it because I don't even know the people that I talk to and so forth. And it's, it's just really funny um, and it obviously reminds us a little bit of the moment that we're in now because we're at the brink of this technological revolution and it will fundamentally change everything we know. Um, so it kind of feels like a déjà vu um, where that we're going through now. And if you could replace the word internet by blockchain or crypto now, I think it, it will work. So, so check it out. And see, these are a few quotes which you probably can't read, but um, so for instance, um, a comedian said it's gold for nerds. Um, then the CEO of Goldman Sachs, which I'm sure you're familiar with, um, said he's still thinking about Bitcoin, no conclusion, not endorsing, not rejecting it. He knows that folks also are skeptical when paper money displays gold. And then, a famous person called Warren Buffett said, stay away from it. In terms of cryptocurrencies, generally I can say, 
almost with certainty that they will come to a bad ending. However, we know that he wasn't always right in his investments. <laughs> so maybe you've made up your mind. Um, I think I have, and I'm really looking forward to kind of look, watching that video and look at the, looking at those quotes in, in a few years and laughing at them. So, and I think that is it. Yeah. Good. Yeah, you can go back. That's it. Perfect. Thanks very much. I'm going to